Hi, it's me, Alexander. And I'm back. This time, we're going to be working on a summer shirt. And what kind of summer shirt? A camp collar shirt. You know the ones. Floppy collar, chest hair out. You know, everything. Those type of shirts. What pattern are we using today? We're using New Look 6197. I'm going to be doing view A right here, not the other ones. I'm doing the men's version, I guess technically unisex, and that's what we're going to dive right into. Let's go. Let's take a minute to look at the fabric. This is an interesting, modern, floral design in a shirtweight cotton. As many of you know, I pre-wash my fabric every single time. Except when it comes to a quilting item. Then I don't pre-wash. And I don't know why that is, but when it comes to making any sort of garment or fashion item, I pre-wash. One, you want to get that shrinkage out. And it's also great to have a nice smelling piece of fabric when you're doing all your other items. That's why I pre-wash. Now, I have to say, I'm a big fan of ironing, pressing, or whatever you want to call it. I like to take my time and make sure every grease and wrinkle is out. This also includes, though, putting in a crease in the center of the fabric. This way, I know exactly where I need to cut, sew, measure to, you name it. Some people don't think ironing is sexy, but let me tell you, Nothing sexier than a freshly pressed and ironed garment. Plus, also, let's be honest, you do get all hot and steamy. Naturally, because I don't have a large ironing board, I am flipping and rotating the fabric, so I get both sides nice and flat. After ironing, I'm taking that piece of fabric to my cutting table, which I wish was wider, but it will have to do. I do take the time to make sure it is nice and flat, and that the crease I put into it, the center of the fabric, is closest to me. I know that might sound a little pedantic, but I like the crease next to me, so I can place all those pattern pieces on the fold properly. Once everything is nicely laid out, I can go ahead and start laying out all the pattern pieces. Again, as you can see, the fold is right next to me, and I'm pinning those pieces nice and perpendicular... Parallel? Perpendicular? Parallel. Parallel to that fold. This is one thing I have learned, is that if you do not make sure all your grain lines on a shirt are done correctly, that when you go to wash it, you'll get twisting, things will bunch, it just won't look nice. So, if you're new to shirt making, make sure your grain lines go with the grain of the fabric. Now, here I am making sure to cut everything out neatly. I usually like to rotate myself versus the fabric when I go to do any of my cutting. Also, for all this cutting, I am using a pair of scissors I bought from Ikea. Now comes the pattern matching for the front. Now, if you know me, I am a big fan of pattern matching. I will spend hours making sure that my pattern down the front of my shirts on both sides match. I don't want no higgledy-piggledy front unmatched patterns. There is a time for higgledy-piggledy, and the front of your shirt is not it. When it comes to parts of the shirt that require the interfacing, I usually cut the pattern pieces out of the interfacing and then well, interface them to the actual shirt pattern. I usually find this works out the best 
and I have less waste that way. This also brings me to a good excellent point. Interface. Please, interface. No one wants a floppy anything. Because I'm me, I am overlocking every single one of the edges in this pattern. Why? Well, it gives it a slightly more professional look, I won't have to worry about anything unraveling or coming apart, and I can use those overlocked edges as my finished seams or hems. Didn't I tell you I liked ironing? After overlocking, I just like to give a quick press to make sure everything goes back to flat. Sometimes with overlocking, it can wrinkle up the fabric, and here I am just pressing it all out again. Here I am finally, getting to the sewing machine. There's a lot of prep work in making a shirt before you even get to sewing. I think a lot of people don't really understand that. But anyways, here I am sewing things together finally. Personally, I find sewing super relaxing and soothing. Maybe it's the rhythm of the sewing machine? Who knows? Since I have made this pattern before, also, since I have made a shirt before, I'm not really following the instructions. I know what I've done, I know how to do it, and I'm just going at it. Sounds like a good date, actually. If there is one thing you're going to take from this video, I use a lot of pins. That's right, a lot of pins pins. As you can see, I pin every single seam, every single edge, and at every single notch.
I will say this. I am not making this shirt over one single day or one single night. I usually take a few days at night to make all my shirts. Why is this, you ask? Well, it's because I have a life outside of sewing. Not that I don't not want a life inside sewing. Please sponsor me. Also, the keen observer would notice that I'm making sure all my notches are lined up. Don't miss your notches. The notches are there to help. Also, I like to take my garments when I'm making them to the ironing board and iron even more. When it comes to hemming, it makes me sad and frustrated all at the same time. As you can see, I already have a overlocked edge and I'm just going to turn that up the half inch or so to give a clean looking front or inside or back or anywhere there is a hem. And again, I've used hundreds of pins. I will let you know right now, the floor in my sewing room is covered in pins, and I don't know why, and I don't know why they keep getting all over the place. Right now, I'm trying to hem the sleeves. Again, something I don't enjoy doing. Sleeves are sort of a bane of my existence because I don't want them tight, but I don't want them all flappy in the wind looking like chicken drumsticks or the waddle. Ugh, who wants that? Now, I'm gonna be honest here, I love working with wovens. One, they're stable most of the time. Two, you generally know what you're getting. And three, I can pattern match fairly easily with a woven fabric. Plus they're fun to cut, just that slicing. Again, pinning is a key essential to anything. I make sure all my pins are in place and probably with double just to make sure my shirt lines up properly and it looks correct. And this goes exponentially to the max when it comes to doing a set in sleeve. I use so many pins, I don't know where the shirt ends, the pins begin or anything. Because putting in a set-in sleeve is not the most fun or elegant thing ever. You have to worry about tucks and if it's going to roll, if it's going to roll to the right way. I will say if you are making a shirt, pins and patience. Now, this handy pattern came with a button guide. So here I am just marking out the buttons with my water-soluble marker, which is from Walmart, weirdly, and I really like it. 
marking out the buttonhole placement is the first thing I do before adding buttons to a shirt. I also need to get my medieval torture device of a buttonholer put onto my machine. It's, um, it's a whole thing. There it is. Big Bertha. Once it's on there, we do a little test to make sure that it will work. If it fits with the button I want to use, and I think since we're good to go, we're going to go at it. Get the actual shirt. I usually try to start at the bottom just in case if it does screw up, I can cover that up later. One button hole, two button hole, three button hole, four. I will say if you are investing in a sewing machine, make sure to get one with a good buttonhole foot or good buttonhole program. Nothing ruins a garment like a sloppy buttonhole. No one likes a wide, gapy, sloppy opening. Once that's done, I just get my buttonhole knife out and punch out the middle of the buttonholes. Easy peasy. Once that's done, it's time to add the actual buttons. I'm using wonder clips and making sure the wrong sides of the shirt are pinned together. That way I can put pins through the buttonholes to find out where the buttonhole or the button needs to go on the other side. Now I just need a mark, boink, 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 all the way down the shirt, take everything apart, and then I can hand sew my buttons to where those blue dots are. I prefer to hand sew a button. I know some people might machine sew a button, but that terrifies me. You know that's gonna break off and hit me in the eye. Once I've hand sewed the buttons all on, as you can see me doing here, which takes usually about an hour, do you know what time it is? I think it's time for the fashion show. I know you've been, I know you've been Hey, and there you have it. All finished, all done, and ready for me to wear out. New look. 6197, I think turned out pretty well. Let me know in the comments below what you think of it. Would you make this shirt? Would you not make this shirt? Do you think I should make more of this shirt? Anyways, happy sewing. Till next time, bye.